Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to I Am Love Church. So I woke up today, and again, as usual, God speaks to me right when I wake up. And as soon as I wake up, I try to go into my prayer and go into reading the Bible and go to shower and go into just straight this sermons because I want you guys to get it fresh. And um, <clears throat> today I didn't really have the chance to do that. Uh, I left and had to go to work for a bit and came back for a second, <clears throat> found out I didn't have to go to work. So then I talked to my wife for a bit about what God is telling me and stuff. Uh, and this is what I got. Servant. On that last day, when Jesus looks at us, he says, good job, good and faithful servant. Servanthood, 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 serve. Go out and serve. Now, the difference between man and God is God says, I do what I only see my father do. I do what I only see my father do, and my father is always working, therefore I am always working. Jesus was always working. He was always serving. He was always looking for opportunities to serve and help people. <clears throat> now, I like to say this. If heaven is a place where people are serving, then hell is a place where people aren't. If heaven is a place where people are sacrificing themselves and loving them, their neighbors, then heaven is a place where people. Uh, then hell is a place where people are narcissists and van in, in vain, and are looking to be served rather than to serve. And as we look around the world, we could definitely see those dif those different contrasts. We see people who are out awake, ready to serve, and therefore, <clears throat> those people are like who Jesus describes, children of God. However, we also see uh, people who are wanting to serve and they're actually wanting people to serve them and those people are usually the ones complaining a lot <clears throat> and that's part of entering the narrow door so I used to be in the military and I used to work da 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 and I used to have other jobs as well when I got out and even before I joined <clears throat> now one of the things that I hated was serving and God said to when in Genesis he says and he, he quotes this in the New Testament as well. Uh, in Paul's writings, he says, As God finished the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh he rested. In the Psalms, he says, I swore my wrath, they will not enter my rest. But Jesus is saying that um, I do what my Father does, and he's working, and therefore I am always working. Well, where's the rest in that? How do you rest if you're working? It doesn't make any sense. Well, here's the beautiful part about God. God doesn't run out of strength. He doesn't run out of energy and he doesn't run out of compassion and his mercy is eternal. What? Yes. So, whereas man, we, our hearts are filled with pride. And actually, they're probably not filled with the love of God, so therefore it's just pride. You know, if, you're, if your heart doesn't have the grace and love and compassion of Jesus Christ who lives in you, then what happens is you hate serving. And since most people don't know who Jesus is, their natural, natural tendency is to hate to serve and to hate to help because their strength is of their own. Their mercy is of their own. Their compassion is in their own. It's in their own self. Their wisdom is in their own self. But if you're walking according to the Spirit and you've surrendered your life to Christ, then He's going to constantly fill you up with new strength, new hope, new wisdom, new everything. He's going to turn your water into wine every morning. You're going to be filled with something new and an energy to give out. And this is why God is the only one who's good because He's the only one who can constantly give something brand new. You see, I, when I lived in this world, I only gave of what I had of yesterday and until I ran out and felt just tired all the time. And some of you guys, you don't even know who Jesus is. So the moment you're born, it was all your strength. And as time progresses, you run, more, you run out of more strength. You're living off of yesterday's fumes. Can you imagine having a car and never changing the oil? or never filling the gas tank up. Some of you guys are running on empty. You guys are long past due empty, long past your oil change in life. Oh, 
It's shrinking. Dang, man. Give me a second. Are you serious? Oh. I hope that does the trick and I hope I was able to be in the shot. Some of you guys have not gotten your heart filled in a long time and you fill it with this things that the world says that will fill your heart drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is, acceptance and beauty and all this stuff. But the only thing that can restore your soul is God. God is the only one who can fill that empty place in your soul and to constantly give you new, a new uh, fill your gas tank up in life. Your spouse can't do it. Your friends can't do it. You can't do it even in yourself. So every day that I wake up, I get on my knees and I pray, God, give me strength for the day. Give me a new strength. Give me new wisdom. Give me new hope every day. And therefore, when I go out into the world, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to help. And it's not of myself. Because if it was of myself, then it would be vain. And I would run out easily. And, I was, and then I would get mad and upset about people not giving me back what I've given them. But it was never mine to begin with. This breath that I breathe is not mine. I woke up today because God wanted me to wake up today. He wanted me to do something today. And therefore, a lot of you people, you don't even know who Jesus is, so you have no purpose in life besides yourself. You've lost all meaning to life because it's not about others and serving others. It's about you. And Jesus says you can't enter in the kingdom if it's about you. It's actually becoming a Christian is about dying to yourself and servant to others. And that's what Jesus did for us. And that's what unconditional love does. You know, I don't wake up every morning to serve my kids, to help them, or I shouldn't, so I can expect something in return. No, Jesus says you do this because that's just who you are. I mean, God gives the breath and life, and, the, and he says he reigns on the just and the unjust. He disciplines them, and he gives freely of them, whether they deserve it or not. He, you don't even know who Jesus is, and he just gives you today. You woke up today, that's a gift. You have your breath, you have your understanding, you have your mind, you have food. Everything that you have is by grace. And the moment that you think that you've earned it is the moment that you have fallen from grace into your own hell, into your own mind, into your, the traps and confinements of what you define as whatever, nirvana. And it's not. It's actually your own hell. But he gives you to your own desires. Oh, you could, be, you could be gay if you want. That's your choice. But guess what? You will not share at my supper. You will not have rest in your life. And that's what it means to live in the will of God versus living outside the will of God. When you live in the will of God, you're renewed every day. The old has passed away yesterday and the new has come today. And you have new hope and you have new forgiveness. The person that pissed you off yesterday, today you come and you see him again or her, and suddenly you're like, you don't even care. You, are, you forgot about it because it's your new cre creation every day. But those of you who are living in the past, you haven't forgiven those people and you're still living there. And it's terrible, you know, because you've leaned on your own understanding. You've leaned on your own mercies. You leaned on your own strength. And that's why you're still feeling tired from 10 years ago, two weeks ago, even yesterday. But Jesus said, you should feel new every day, brand new. You should feel like you were born again every day. But those who are born again are only feeling those things because they are in the covenant of God. And that's what's wrong with our, with our leadership this day. They don't want to serve. All they want to do is sit down and do nothing. And Jesus says, I tell you that the, the leaders of this day, they want to lord over each other. They want to delegate to each other, but they don't want to lift a finger to help anybody. And that's what you guys strive for. This is how you have a mentality of earth. The mentality of human beings is to, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to the top. And when I get to the top, I'm not going to do anything. And that's what your degrees are for. You, get, you go, to, go to college just to basically bust your butt in college, get to the top and not want to do anything anymore. You know, or you open your business and then suddenly you don't want to do anything anymore. You just want to sit down, talk and gossip and delegate everyone to do all your dirty work for you. But Jesus says, do not be like them. 
Listen to what they tell you because they, because, you know, you work for them. But do not be as they are because they're, they're hypocrites. And they're the ones who complain about the most. I will tell you not. This is a testimony. I was in this courthouse, right? And not judging everyone who works in the courthouse, but there were some people that I've talked to that said, oh, yeah, you used to work in the courthouse, such and such and such, right? I'm like, okay. <clears throat> and then they would complain about people outside the courthouse, right? These high, and I'm relating it to people who are in authority. That's what I'm saying. And same thing, I would talk to some of these bosses. They would sit there and they would be up in their castle or whatever their office or whatever as they think it's their castle. And they would sit there and be like, oh, be, no one does anything down there. You guys sit down and don't do anything down there, right? And the people downstairs were whom I worked with, the employees, they would sit there and be like, the people up top don't do anything. And it's just crazy. It's just amazing. Like, wherever I go, I see the same thing. I see the people on the top who've owned businesses or whatever, <clears throat> complaining about the people downstairs. And I hear them downstairs, and I hear the people talking about the people upstairs. And it's just like, when is it going to end? You know, if we only had this, this, and this, and it, they would only give us this, this, and this from the people upstairs. They only do these things, the people that are in charge of our community, Battle Mountain, or the world, right? If the politicians will finally do this, this, and this, and this, then we'll get our, our, our act together, you know? And then the people up there are saying, if the people downstairs would finally do this, this, and this, and this, and the people of this, and this, and this, then we'll have a better community. Then we'll have a better world. But I tell you what Jesus is saying, he says, Unless you change, the world has no reason to change. And that's what Jesus did, and that's what church should be about, you know? The, the, the church is, is us, the people, you as individuals. And unless you change, unless your heart changes, the world ain't never going to change. I mean, Jesus was one man, one man. And that's what the church should be. The church should be graceful. It should, be, uh, it should find new hope every day. It should be the light of our community. But it's not because the leaders have turned into lazy people. They've turned into worldly people. They no longer find their strength in the Lord. They find their strength just like the people in the world in, in their pleasures, in their worldly pleasures. But Jesus says that's not life. For the greatest, if you want to be great, you have to be a great servant. And it's unfortunate. Jesus says, how do I like in this generation? We've danced and we've played the pipe for you, but we've, we've, sung, we've sung a melody and you have not danced. We've sung a sad song and you have not cried or mourned. And Jesus is saying, everyone is complaining about everyone, but nobody's doing anything about it. And when we look at the Gospels, we see Jesus is actually doing things about it. We see the blind man who's asking to be healed. And you worldly people turn it away. Oh, it's not me, not my responsibility, you know. And Jesus heals that man. You see a woman with the issue of blood, and he goes and he helps her. And this is for you guys who are ministers too. You see people who are damaged and hurt in your community, and you don't do anything about it. You look for everyone else to do it, to put your blame on someone else to do it. And it's just like, when is my children finally going to take responsibility and do what I've already told them that they can do? He says, if you believe, if your faith is small as a mustard seed, that you can tell this mountain to throw itself in the sea and it will. When are you going to go help that person who's in need? Step outside your comfort zone. Faith is small as a mustard seed. But I tell you, unless you do that, your world is never going to change. Be the change you want to see in the world. And with that being said, um, it's us. It's us. Until we change, until our hearts change, soften. We cannot lean on our own understanding. We cannot lean on our own strength, our own hope, our own anything. We have to lean on the Lord. That's the light. That's the light. Because if you lean on yourself, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to run out of strength. And Jesus said, I swore my wrath that will not enter my rest. And then, I mean, that's the way this world is. The way the world is, is you give me this and I'll give you that. And some of you guys, you've treated church that way. 
Unless they do something for me, then I'll do that. Unless they become a Christian, then I'll do that. When Jesus says, that's not who I am. I don't approve people because they're Christians or not Christians. I just approve them because I love them. And you turned this thing into Christianity. It was never designed that way. God never intended it to be groups of people. He wants to save the whole world and he wants to use you. But you're not willing to let him use you because you're not willing to let him forgive you. You're not willing to let him refresh you. And here's one of the things that I've learned yesterday. How do you know if someone's saved and someone isn't? And I'm going to discern that for you right now. When Jesus came to this world and God created it and finished it in six days and rested on the seventh, he, fit, he sent his only son to be the finished product. The seventh day is Jesus, is Jesus' coming. Everything was created through him. Those were the six days. The seventh day, Jesus came and now we were able to see him. And you've been living your life in all those six days and not seeing the finished product, which is the seventh day, which is, your, which is you being baptized and you coming to Christ. That's what it means, the seventh day. The seventh day is finished. From the foundation of the world, Jesus was already slain. So what does it even mean when, with, when, with uh, Jesus coming as a baby? Well, that's some theological debate. Anyways, the point is this. Do you want to find out what your life here on earth really means? Come to Jesus. One of the biggest debates that I've had this morning with my wife, uh, I remembered it. I think I'm about done. Give me a second. I'm trying to get it free. I think I wear these gloves. <laughs> Entering rest. Entering rest. <sighs> Dang, I can't I can't get it, Lord. What is it? What was I so adamant about? It was God finished the heaven and earth seven days, and then he wants us to, oh, faith, that's right. For, the, for those of you who don't know what faith is, this is what God told me yesterday. I wish I would have preached this um, a while ago. I don't want to forget it. What is faith? How do you discern what faith is? Faith, faith, because this is the biggest theological like debate is what makes someone saved. Well, I'm going to start off with this analogy. The analogy goes like this. If you're drowning, right? And someone either jumps in or throws a life vest into the water, right? and you grab onto it and they pull you out of the water, you're no longer drowning, right? And the salvation works the same way. Salvation is Jesus came to save you from your sins, right? So he came to set you free from your um, demise before you drown in your own sin. Now, when he takes you out of your sin once you once he heals you of that your job is to not go back into the water see now you were saved you're in the lifeboat of the ark or of G in jesus but then if you go back into your sin if you jump back in the water you're not saved no more so this defeats the whole purpose of oh once saved always saved no because you have free will you could still go back to into your sin if Jesus heals you, then you're saved, then you're healed, then you're forgiven. But if you jump back into your sin and your old lifestyle, then you're not saved no more. Paul talks about this as well. Do I do anything I want now because God died for my sins? He says, God forbid. No, you don't. You actually stay away from those things. You actually stay 
in obedience to Christ and the leading of the Spirit. And here's one of the things that I've had a debate about someone about was, it was about tongues. Now, what qualifies someone is faith. The person was only able to get out of that boat or I mean of the water because they had faith to grab the person's hand or to grab onto the life vest or grab onto the boat and fish themselves out of the water for if they did not reach out then they wouldn't be saved so the same thing happens with every person that Jesus has healed they came to him by faith they believed the woman with the issue of blood apparently this is what i've heard she was at home she wasn't supposed to be around anybody she wasn't even supposed to come into the community because she had this issue and she could give it to other people the same thing with the leper he was they had a segregated place where only lepers would would go right you didn't want them to be around everyone so this these people they had to leave by faith they had to they had to stand up or crawl or whatever they did, walk all the way and squeeze through the crowd just to get to Jesus. And Jesus says, that's faith right there. He says, action is faith. Now going back to the tongues, he says, I've already given you tongues. The thing is, do you believe it? Do you put it into action? And, I would, and, I, and this is how I'll justify that for you. Here, here's this. What happened when Jesus ascended up into heaven and they went to Pentecost? What happened at Pentecost? They prayed daily, 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 but nothing happened. Nothing happened, nothing happened. And then suddenly something happened, boom, and then God anointed them. What's the point of praying? What's the point of praying for your, for your enemies if nothing's going to happen? And this is faith. Everything that we do is by faith. When we read the word of God, when we apply the word of God, we do it because we believe that this is the word of God. Because the difference between this being the word of God or some other text being the word of God is faith. Oh, I believe Buddhism's real. Therefore, I don't believe in your God. Well, that's faith, unfortunately. But if you believe that this is God's word, then you also believe and you will do what it says that he likes to be done. So if you believe you have tongues, then you have them. If you believe you're healed and forgiven, then you're healed and forgiven. These are, you can't please God unless you believe. So this, this completely abolishes the once saved, always saved. Oh, let me wait for God to anoint me and then I'll go speak in tongues. No, Jesus is saying, I already gave you it. The problem is you don't believe that. It's all by faith that we're saved. That we come to Jesus, that we're saved, that we pray. We pray to God and we believe that he hears us. Nothing can please God unless you believe it. Abraham didn't just walk in the middle of the desert and become the... Uh, the father of all nations. No, he went there by faith. And I pray by faith. And I ask by faith. And I speak in tongues by faith. By faith, I do these things. And I tithe by faith. And I do good works by faith. And I obey the word of God by faith. I don't do this for my own self. I do this because I'm compelled by faith. I have the Holy Spirit. It's all by faith. You sit down by faith and we'll hope that that chair doesn't fall apart. You go to work by faith. You drive your car to work or whatever you go, by faith it's not gonna break down. Everything you do should be by faith that God's gonna come through. But unless you need to know, and this is for you guys who think you need to know, and you have to do it by faith because God gave you free will free will. You have free will. Because in that case, once saved, always saved. Oh, God already chose a bunch of people to be saved or not to be saved or everyone saved. It doesn't even matter. Those things alleviate free will. Oh, it's free will. Once the anointing comes in, that's God's will. No, you have free will and you are held accountable for everything that you've done and will do. Whether you repent or not is up to you. Whether you believe the word of God is up to you. So Arminianism and, or Calvinism, whatever, that's all out of the window. 
It's by faith, by your free will. And this is why I do these videos. I do these videos by faith. I, I pray and hope that somebody's going to hear it. Hear the word. Get the truth. You know, so. I think that pretty much sums up what I had to talk about. It's kind of like two sermons in one. Servanthood, man. I serve by faith. And I'm restored by faith. He restores my wisdom. He restores, not res just restores, it gives me something new to think about, you know? And it's just, I am, man, so blown away. Oh, someone's a, you know, let me just get into it. Oh, someone, people believe in other doctrines and other things by faith. Does that make it true? Well, Jesus says this, he says, I, didn't I call you all gods? I'm not saying that you're a god, but your god is in the sense of you have free will. Your free choice shows that your free will shows that you could believe that. But Jesus says the word, the scriptures can't be, um, they can't contradict itself. If I called you gods and according to the word of God, the scriptures can't something, I forget the verse, but he's basically saying the scriptures have to be fulfilled. Regardless if they believe those things, they have to be fulfilled. But God gives them their free will to believe that. Whether that comes true or not, it's up to them because it's their free will. But we know we believe in the truth and we know our prayers that are good and in alignment with God's will come true. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, <laughs> I knew I had something else, but I know there's going to be so much more of these. <laughs> Thank you for watching, man. Believe, believe, believe. Use your faith. Step out in faith. You know, everything you do, do by faith. Faith, faith, faith. You know, faith is a verb. It's an action. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. It means no, it makes no sense to look at the Bible and not apply it. What am I? Paul, uh, James says, he says, what am I if I'm a, uh, show me your faith and I'll show you my works. For faith, faith without works is dead. So basically, what do you do? You look at the Bible, you look at the perfect mirror, right? The Bible, and then you forget about it when you go into the world. What does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything. Knowing isn't just enough. Looking at your Bible for the, the moment and forgetting what it says is not enough. Applying it is the only thing that matters. Because anyone can talk. Everyone talks, but no one does. And this plays a huge role, actually, into the identity of servanthood. Serving, serving, serving. Oh, I know I should serve. I know what pleases God. I mean, I hear sermons every day. I read the Bible, but I'm not going to actually pray for my enemies. So I'm just going to talk bad about them. That means you have no faith. You can memorize the entire scripture and not apply any of it. That means you didn't learn anything. And some of you guys are like that. You guys think you're so wise. You think you're leaders. You think that you're just the most holiest thing ever that ever happened, the best thing that ever happened. And you don't apply any of the stuff that Jesus has taught you. He says right here, everything by faith, do it by faith. And you say, oh, you look at it. You memorized it. You even in a tangle, you like to go around arguing with everybody, proving that they're wrong. But your lifestyle doesn't show anything. It doesn't show any of the Jesus actions. It doesn't show anything. Your fruit is, there's nothing to pluck off of it, your tree. You know, if we are trees, then you're just, what could you pluck off of your things? He said, by their fruit, you will know them. By the way they, by the way that they move and act and interact with people, you know, you will know that they are of the kingdom of God. Jesus came from heaven to establish his kingdom on earth. But if you're still living earthly, then you weren't born again and you're not saved because you're still committing the sins that you were supposed to be saved from. And that's how you know who's part of the kingdom. Heaven is not like earth. It has a whole new government, a whole new way of living, a whole new way of looking at the world. It's not of this earth. We should be aliens compared to the world. We should not, we should not look like the world. We should not act like the world. We should act apart from the world because we're not of this world. We're from someone, another world. You know, if you go to a different country, you see the etiquettes and how they treat one another. It's completely different. And that's how we are 
here because we're not from this world. And Jesus says, I'm not from this world. But if you're acting like this world and you talk like this world, this world hears you. But if you don't act and talk like this world, then this world doesn't hear you. That's how you know. And, the, and, and, and how do you become like God? How do you become like Jesus? The Bible tells us how. It tells us how, what heaven is like as it is in heaven. He came to bring the new, the new food, the bread of life. He came to bring his teachings of what heaven and what God is like. But we're never going to see that unless we start to obey it and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, this is what hell is like. A bunch of narcissistic a-holes, gossips, monglers, and murderers. Whether they go out and murder people physically or whether they do it with their tongue or do it with their thoughts. He says, if you think or speak against anyone, you spoke against me. Think about that. That's intense, man. I think about how I treat people, even my enemies. I actually, it's hard to pray for my enemies at first. Shoot, it took me years to finally still pray, start praying for them. But now when I deal with people, I just like, I turn my cheek, I put my head down and I just pray for them right then and there. Boom, shh, pray for them. You know what? And it makes me feel real good. But the moment I start gossiping and start saying all these mean things about them, it makes me feel terrible, terrible, terrible. Pray for your enemies. That pleases God not only pleases God, it makes you feel better about yourself. Jesus didn't come to save us from our sins for, you know, to gain anything out of it. He came to save us because it helps us. Because God doesn't need us in heaven. He wants us in heaven. He doesn't need, oh, come on, please, please worship me. No, he doesn't need that. He's like, this is benefiting you. The Bible is benefiting you. And so that's why I teach it. I don't teach it because I'm trying to gain something from you. Oh, come on, give me some tithe money or I'm not going to teach you anything. You know, pay me so I can get, you know, (laughs) I'm not like that. I'm not trying to be like that. That's not the God that I serve. God gives me grace every day freely. So I want to give it to you freely. He teaches me freely. So I'm going to teach you freely. You know, for everything that I give, I give it because he gave it to me for free. He gave me his blood for free. He gave me his teachings for free, his word for free, his spirit for free. And I want to give you everything that he's given me for free, you know. Compassion for free, kindness, joy for free. And that's what the church should be like. It should be a light to the world. Wow, everything is free here. It should be, you know, because that's our God. You know, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, the money and all that stuff. And give, you know, because everything belongs to God. And that's what's wrong with the church is nothing is free anymore. Our churches have turned into businesses, you know. And it's just like, you give me this and I'll give you that. You know, you come to our, you you do this for us and I'll do this for you. And then you'll get your healing and then you'll get your this. And it's just like, that's not the church, man. The church is unconditional. It should be. Unconditional, As our God is unconditional, our church is unconditional. Pastors shouldn't just be working one day a week. They should be working every day a week because our God works every day a week. And Jesus, when he walked this earth, as he still walks it, works for free. But, you know, the ways of man aren't the ways of God. You know, the church should be sharing pretty much everything except each other's spouses. <laughs> We should be sharing pretty much everything. And that's where the healing should happen. We should be offering ourselves as a sacrifice to everything that we have and that we own. What's mine is yours. But it's not. It's turning out to be this, turn into the world. It's becoming the image of this world, which is I have what I have and you have what you have and you're on that side and da 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 da. And it's just like we're all children of God and we should all share everything that we have. But we have to believe it first. That's the problem. We don't do it if we don't believe it. You only do what you believe. So if you you believe that alcohol is going to bring you happiness, then that's what you do. If you believe that chasing money is going to bring you happiness, then that's what you seek and that's what you chase. And that's what your God is and that's what you worship. You worship whatever you do. 
if you read books all day, then that's what you worship. You worship thinking that's going to bring you happiness and bring you joy and bring you eternal life. But Jesus says you can seek these things, but you will not find the end of it. But if you seek me, I will show you the end. I will show you what God's like. I will bring you into my dwelling where I dwell in heaven. And we just we just live in a jacked up world. Someone said upside down. I would say psh, not even of. I would say that's part that's part of the truth, but that's not even the full picture. God loves you unconditionally. And your heart doesn't understand that. We don't understand what unconditional love. All we understand is condition, this for that, that for this. It's terrible. We live in a terrible world. We live in a world that I don't want to be a part of. I can't wait till I die because I don't want to be here anymore. So much conditions on everything. Oh, we can't do this, can't do this, you know? Everyone's competing against each other because nobody has any grace. Jesus came to bring peace with his blood. And there's no peace in the church anymore. And I ain't speaking about one church. I'm sure there is pieces in some churches that do and are doing what God wants them to do. But for the most part, it's too easy to be prideful. It's too easy to think that, oh, you know, I'm the leader. So everything happened because of me, you know, and it didn't. We forget God. We forget what he's done for us. And therefore, we can't give that to others. None of us are better than any of us. Jesus did it all for us. Jesus is the only one to praise, the only one with glory, the only one with wisdom, the only perfect one. Jesus was tired of all of us fighting and arguing, and, and he was just like, I'm coming down there to finish it. And that's what he did. When he died on the cross, he said, it's finished. There's no, there should be no more boasting. And the fact that there's boasting in the church shows that Jesus isn't there. He can't be in a place where there's evil. He can't abide in a temple, a body, if there's evil in it. And he says, I not can't, I won't. I won't live inside of you if there's evil present. I won't come into your church or your house or your job if there's evil present. So that's what's happening to this world. It's like Jesus is leaving. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But if there's no spirit of the Lord, then there's no freedom. There's just a bunch of people judging each other. And it's terrible. It's terrible. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. But man, how he makes me feel every day. Amazing. So if you want to live a good life, if you want to find out who this God is, I would say one thing I forgot to say this week. Repent. Look at the Bible, look at the Ten Commandments. If you're breaking any of these things, repent. Forgive your neighbor, forgive yourself. Repent of your sins. And unless you repent, you will die in your sins. Only Jesus can forgive you. Only Jesus, only Jesus can forgive you. Repent of your sins and be baptized. And read your freaking Bible, man. That's what I'm saying, read your Bible. Learn who our God is. Learn how to please him. Learn how to worship him. Stop pleasing yourself and stop pleasing each other and start to try to please the God that saved you and that heals you and that loves you eternally. No one else can love you like this, God. Not even me. No one. And I say that because I think I'm pretty good sometimes and I'm not. I'm terrible. I thank you for watching. God bless.